Hello, everyone. This is Akata. Thank you for joining me. Today, with great enthusiasm, I am going to talk about the natal chart and the transit chart of Julian Assange. As many of you um, are following his um, story, I have absolutely no idea how the court system works. All I know is he has been sent to these American-owned islands very close to Australia to have the court sentence where he pleaded guilty. And with that agreement, he is going to go back to Australia as a free state. So let's put this, the, the legal aspect aside. From a spiritual point of view, I think he is the greatest example of a pathfinder, an archetypal, where he was fighting, he is fighting for the freedom, for the liberty of information, the unjust, the manipulation from the elite. And all this happening just now, today we are on the 26th of June, and he is going to have his solar return in just one week on the 3rd of July. I think it is very interesting and with his chart we are going to see how this planetary influence movement influencing this whole movement of to him and as a consequences also as a reflection to our mass consciousness so let me share the screen now. If we look at the screen, this is his transit chart. The inner circle is his natal. The outer circle is the transiting planetary movement. And without looking at any planet and houses and zodiac sign, we just look at this diagram here. First of all, we can already see this mystic rectangle where we have two trines with two sextine. And together with that, we have diamond shaped height formation. <laughs> I mean, you can't make these things up. The energy was is so on point the first things i want to point out that is he has his natal pluto on the 27th degree in virgo conjuncting his natal lily at three degree in libra On the day of his solar return, we will have the transiting lily ingress in Libra at zero degree. So the Libra, the, the lily, the black moon lily influence is conjuncting both his natal uh, Pluto and his lily return. I see Lilith in this case is the reclaiming, the redemption of a self identity of what this person is value represents, reclaiming it from Lilith as 
as an outcast from Eden, from the heaven, Julian Assange has been the outcast from our society by standing for what he believed to be just, to be right. And with Lilith going into Libra, the sign of justice. It is very significant of the of the energetic imprint of this moment. And also together in Libra, in the sign of Libra, he has the south uh, the south node transiting uh, conjunct his Uranus and unconventional event, a sudden event that maybe for many of us as much as we have been hoping that one day he will get back he will have his freedom back we would not know until for sure until it is actually happening and this is unconventional this is sudden with the self note it's as if reclaiming back his karmic Place in his in his life now in his life journey, and with this, the Lilith is sextiling with Mercury, his natal Mercury and part of Fortune, and the transiting Mercury as well. Mercury is considered the messenger of God. And with the axis of part of fortune, conjuncting his natal Mercury and the transiting Mercury is like a message to all of us that we shall not constrain or limit our expression. And he has always fight for this freedom of speech, of information available to the mass so that we know what we are going through and to make our choice as a consequences. And here in the signs of cancer, that where his son is 10 degrees, Together, we have also Venus, the goddess of love. With cancer, it is so motherly, is embracing with the energy of Venus. I think in a way he is also showing that we fight for what is just, we fight for what is right through the energy of love. Later on, I will go into a little bit also of his galactic astrology chart to see how his soul journey represents. For this moment, we stay there just with cancer that we have, Venus and Mercury, both the goddess of love and the messenger of God. And, and I find it, the, the, the moment is so appropriate, so connecting with what is happening. And we should also remember Pluto over here. Pluto has entered 
into Aquarius on the 14th of January this year. And he has been here going very slowly, moving forward. And now Pluto is moving back in retrograde, is still at one degree in Aquarius. In September, Pluto will go back into Capricorn. So, with what is happening now, that of him getting the justice of his freedom back, we are in this Aquarian vibration, feeling the masses, mass consciousness fighting for with the unconditional love, with what the, the, the shift of consciousness. And when Pluto go back to Capricorn, we should look back how this energy moving from Capricorn to Aquarius, and when it moved back for one last time, how we have experienced in the last 15 years with the constraint, with the control, with the limitation from establishment, from our government, on our actions, our freedom as well. We shall not forget in the last four or five years, ever since the end of 2019, all of us, we were in a sort of open prison. We were constrained, ordered to stay home, to stay away from our family, to stay away from our loved ones because of certain medical procedures. And Another point, focal point at this moment is Neptune at 29 degree. That form this grand trine with part of fortune of his, uh, of the part of fortunes with his natal Mercury and his natal Neptune at zero degree in Sagittarius. So his natal Neptune is trining the transiting Neptune. The search of our spiritual advancement of the new paradigm that we are working toward. Have we moved out from this ocean of uncertainty to a point where we can understand where we are? That the new world that we would like to build up. And with that, we have this mystical tri uh, rectangle with Pluto tiny Uranus sextiling Mercury and going back to his natal Neptune that is the energies is moving him forward to stand for what he represents as a freedom fighter, as a pathfinder in the Aquarian age. With that, is supported by Lilith here on top of the chart of self-sovereignty that she, as Lilith, she always stand up for what she believed to be right. Regardless, the outside pressure, suppression, 
she never bends her knees. She knows what is right and she stands for it. And Julian Assange is so appropriate in these circumstances here of this vibration of how he stands for what he believed as a consequence he became the outcast has been for ages moving from escaping from countries to countries for asylum and asylums and and today he has his freedom back just as Lilith he has his Lilith return in Libra at three degree. I am amazed. I am so amazed by this chart. And if we go down to the next um, diagram, next chart, here, I would like to concentrate on the asteroid influence. Okay. We already talked about Lilith, the transiting Lilith. Now is conjuncting his natal Pluto, the regeneration, reburn, the rebirth from an old situation. Now he is burning off the old self to rebirth as a phoenix to a new stage of his of his life journey with his Lilith return. And another one that I would like to talk about. Most of these asteroids I have already talked about in my in my last video on the on the summer solstice. And here with him in his particular chart. We move back here. Vesta has just entered Leo. Vesta the goddess, the guardians of, of flame, of youth. She represents also on her own right of the righteousness. And at, on his, uh, on his sol solar return, Vesta is conjuncting Juno. Juno, the wife of Zeus. And Juno has, as a goddess, she has sacrificed so much of his, of her self-identity as a wife of Zeus. And now with Vesta, the transiting Vesta, conjuncting Juno, is as if saying, how Are we, in a general, to stand up for what is right? If we have been sacrificing ourselves for the sake of others, now it's time to gain back this flame inside us, to let this flame to burn for, for its justice. And, and, and they are in Leo, the exuberant, ruled by the sun, we bring it out. It's not just the inner work anymore. Now we show it to the world. We bring it out to the world. And we've moved back here in, in Gemini. And we have Satner. Satner has entered, just entered in Gemini, in April, but Saturn is conjuncting his natal Saturn, the reclaiming of his karmic, armor past. His is almost like reclaiming his his divine right to set up 
what is right for him from now on to build up, to establish in his own journey. And Saturn is an outer asteroid so far away in our solar system. She is going to be here forever. And I think almost 50 years. And none of us, <laughs> many of us, will not see Saturn moving into Cancer. This is the energy we are going to live, to live with, to deal with, to embrace for the next 20, 30, 40 years. And have a look in your own chart. Um, Saturn in Gemini, in which house represents in your own chart? So you know how, to, in which area in your life that you are going through this redemption of self-identity as well, of the story of Saturn, of, 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 um, of, from an uh, inward girl that going through this process, going, he, she, she, she married to a stranger outside from his islands. After she had been refusing many marriage proposals, at the end, we don't know if she married for the sake of marriage or to marry because she wants to go away from her local, from where she was born. And the story goes that her father came to pick her up in these far away islands only to find out the husband that she was married to was a shapeshifter of crows. And when when they were in the middle of the ocean, he got so scared and, and, and she threw Sagner out into the ocean. And while she tried to, to come back up, holding on to the boat, and her own father cut off her hands and let her drown down to the ocean. And when she realized that, what she has known all her life was refuting her, refusing her, rejecting her. And she let herself drown to the middle, to the depth of the ocean. And when she let herself go, she turned into the goddess of the ocean. From a normal inward girl, she became the goddess by letting go the past into the unknown and letting the, this old self die. And here we have Saturn conjuncting Julian Assange, NATO Saturn. Maybe for the next years to come, he is going to redeem his rightful position and establishing for himself what is his divine right. And I think what he is going to do is not just limiting to him. What he is going to do will have so much impact to all of us. And together with that, we have the transiting North Node exits conjuncting East NATO Chiron. So I think now it has been going on of this healing process for him in his emotional, physical, by staying in prison for so long, his mental, that he has been fighting so dormantly, so with so much perseverance and and willpower, and now is the time for him to reclaim and to walk toward his purpose. Through this not known healing of his person, 
of what he has missed the last 20 years in his life. A healing process for him to build up as a consequence with Saturn for the next year to come. And that is the transiting North Node. What happening here also, we have Jericho conjuncting his natal North Node. Jericho is the wife of Chiron. She is the energy, the divine feminine that giving the support Chiron has to endure in his journey. So in a way that I think he is also moving toward his purpose with his natal north node by healing and bringing out this divine feminine aspect to fight for what is right, not through violence, but through the feminine energy, love. In Aquarius, as a mass consciousness, with a group of people. And I am so intrigued to curious to know what is going to happen from now onward? And if we look, here is his um, Galactic Astrology chart. I only want to point out a few points from his Galactic Astrology chart that he has his Pluto and Lily conjunct the super galactic center. As we know, the super galactic center is like the black hole in our galaxies. And it has the power of attraction and pulling in everything that is around them towards them because of their energetic influence, of the energy they are sharing with other people, and people are drawn to them with who has this supergalactic center in their chart in such an important position with Pluto as if his soul started there that he know that he come here to draw the attentions and to have that influence that he is going to make in this lifetime. And I would dare say from many lifetimes as well, not only in this planet, but in his soul journey, also in other. And the lilies, the, the, the reclaiming of self-sovereignty, with Pluto, the dying, the regenerations again and again of, of epoch, of generations, of who he is as well. And I think this super galactic center is just so important for him. Another point that I would like to point out before we talk about um, Venus okay Venus at this moment is in Cancer but he has his Venus in Gemini and what is interesting is he has Orion Scythe as a fixed star Scythe in the Orion constellation The safe fixed star has a very peculiar, particular energy. Some of us have it in our charts. I have it in my charts. That 
Who has that? Very often. We are like the trigger. We are like the catalyst. We reflect to people or trigger them to see their shadow. And somehow in our life, we might, especially in the early, early stage, we might point out other people's shadows and fear without much consideration or tactics. And we might want to help the others to change, to heal without the other person actually asking for it. With the shift of consciousness, with age of how we learn to be a little bit more considerate, with more tactics, we learn to also let go of this impulse in us, help people without being asked. And with him, Scythe conjunct her Venus. Maybe when he started his movement by letting out those secrets. And I think if I tune into him and feeling what he, and I feel that he was doing it for the sake of the others, right? And as much as he wanted to catalyst the, the change, the shift in our society, that action that put him into the, pos the situation, position that we know. But because it is conjunct with his dreams, and I highly believe that, he has done it through in the name of love. And was it the right action to take or if there were some other alternatives? We don't know. What happens happened and whatever happened is rightful for all of us, including him. And the last point I would like to point out is his Chiron, which we talked about before, that is conjunct Andromeda. And Andromeda as a, as a constellation also very much stands for righteousness. Technology. They are extremely intelligent, star beings. They are rightful, righteous. And as if he is coming here this time, in this lifetime, through his Andromeda energy to heal what is needed to be healed for him and as a consequence for the mass consciousness. And in this moment is conjuncting the transiting north node. And so that would be for all of us in these areas energy to heal the person that we are, where we stand, what we represent. Each and single one of them. Now I stop sharing. I hope that through this analysis of, 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 of him, of Julian Assange, 
of what he represents is um, I want to call him freedom fighter, a finder in this Aquarian age. And we should never give up on hope after all this year that he finally has his freedom back. And I hope that is just not a moment of enthusiasm from us in supporting him. In and I think many of us in the last few years that we have really clearly see how we are being manipulated and a finder like him that has risked so much his own life, his own happiness, his own freedom and We shall not give up, regardless how difficult our life is in our own life and the society that we live in. As long as there is hope, there is always to me and hope every one of us walking toward our self our North Node with enthusiasm, with consistency and perseverance. We will get there. They cannot stop what is we are. If you would like your natal chart or transit chart reading with me and Galactic Astrology, Please visit my website, becominglotus.org. From my heart to yours. See you next time.